Hey guys, welcome to another video. I just got back from my walk. I got in 5,000 steps so far, so that's a good start. And I'm very hungry now, so I'm gonna make some breakfast. And I thought that this recipe would be a good intro to the video that I'm about to do, which is talking about the resources that help my dad and I along our plant-based journey. The recipe I'm gonna do comes from the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook by Ann Cryle Esselstyn and Jane Esselstyn. Ann is Dr. Esselstyn's wife. And he is one of the first plant-based experts that I came across when I was investigating this way of eating. The recipe is called Savory Smoky Oats. And I have to admit, I was less than enthused about the idea of savory oats because I was so used to eating them as a sweetened breakfast food. Like even in my daily cereal, I put raisins in that. And when I make oatmeal, I usually do cinnamon, some sort of fruit, and maybe a touch of maple syrup. So I was always used to eating it as a sweet food. And I decided to give it a try because this picture looked so good. And I'm glad I did because I will tell you, this recipe really blew my socks off. I was so impressed. The recipe calls for steel cut oats. I don't have any of those, so I've been using rolled oats. Turns out just fine. And then it calls for shiitake mushrooms. And I didn't have any of those the last time, but I just used whatever fresh mushrooms I had at the time. And I don't even have any fresh mushrooms right now, but I did find a bag of frozen mushrooms, which I'm gonna use. Now, the only thing I'm gonna do different with these this time is I'm gonna saute these until they get nice and caramelized because I really wanna bring out some flavor. I, so that's the only thing different that I'm gonna do. The last time I made this, I just chopped up fresh mushrooms and threw them in. I didn't do this extra step, but I just wanna see what happens by sauteing them and kind of building a little bit of flavor first. And then the next ingredient is nutritional yeast, also known as nooch in the vegan world. The next ingredient is turmeric, which is that intensely yellow spice that is incredibly good for you. But what I'm gonna use instead is Dr. Gregor's savory spice blend. And this is a, a blend that you grind up yourself. It comes out of his How Not to Die cookbook and it has turmeric in it and it smells amazing. I used this the last time and it was really good. Then she calls for no salt added diced tomatoes. And since I had 5,000 tomatoes sitting on my countertop, I just chopped up some tomatoes and some spinach. Uh, one of the ingredients is liquid smoke and I don't have any of that on hand but I did have some smoked paprika, which I used the last time, and that tasted really good. Then there's just garlic and onion powder and a little bit of pepper to taste. All right, let's throw this together. So you just throw everything together except the spinach and let it cook. Once it's cooked, then you can add the spinach because it doesn't take long for that to wilt down. When I ate this the last time, I found a tiny bit of something salty over the top, tasted really good. So I added just a few drops of Bragg's liquid aminos or like a little tiny pinch of salt. If you're going salt free, obviously don't add any salt to this, but if you are doing a little bit of salt in your diet, the best time to add salt to your food is just before you eat it, sprinkle just a tiny bit over the top. That way it hits your taste buds and you really get that salty flavor. Because if you add it during cooking, a lot of that just dissipates during cooking and you don't really taste it. But if you sprinkle just a tiny little bit over your food, you really get that salty flavor that you're desiring and you don't need to use much at all. give this a try it is really really good and really when you think about it oats are just a whole grain like anything else they can be served savory or sweet and it just kind of goes to show you how easily your be beliefs can be shaped by like your customs or just what you're used to so I'm glad that I tried something different because this is fabulous 
Hello everyone, and if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Jeanette, and this is I Kill Chickpeas. Today's video is one that I have been wanting to make for a very long time because had I looked for or found something like this when my dad and I were first starting out in all of this, it would have made things a whole lot easier. So what I wanted to do was put together a compilation of the plant-based resources that helped us when we first started our journey because over time, I kind of pieced together all of this information and now I can kind of articulate everything and kind of go over everything that helped us along the way. So obviously I'm not gonna be covering every single plant-based expert that is out there. I'm only gonna tell you the people that helped my dad and I along the way. So this is gonna be my own interpretation of everything, my own opinions, um, and again, it's not an all-inclusive list. So if you've seen any of my previous videos, you probably saw how I got started eating a plant-based diet in the first place. And that was because my father had some very serious life-threatening vascular disease and we needed him to eat a plant-based diet to save his life. I started eating a plant-based diet right along with him. Ultimately, we each lost 70 pounds and we completely turned our health around and he is still alive today. So in a nutshell, he had a triple bypass when he was 39. He had another procedure done on another heart artery in his 40s. He had a very big stroke in his early 50s. And then when he was in his early 60s, he had a life-threatening mini stroke. And this is where the doctors could no longer fix him. So out of desperation, I went to the internet and I started to research natural therapies for vascular disease. And this is where everything started for us. People come at this way of eating from several different avenues I've found. Some people choose to eat a vegan diet for animal welfare. Some people come at this from the aspect of human health and other people are concerned about environmental impact. I have to say that over the past five years that my dad and I have been eating this way, all three elements are very, very important to us, but we came in the human health door. And so maybe that will help you understand why I found the people that I did. But these are the plant-based resources that have helped us over our five-year journey so far. Okay, because I initially did a search for natural therapies for vascular disease, the first two people that I came across were Dr. T. Colin Campbell and Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn Jr. Let's start with Dr. Campbell. He is Professor Emeritus of Nutritional Biochemistry at Cornell University, and he and other researchers did a study, a very long study. It's the most um, comprehensive study done so far on nutrition and health, and he wrote about that in his book called The China Study, which he co-authored with his son, Dr. Tom Campbell, who is a medical doctor. This book, I believe, was the first book that I ever read. I will admit it is not light, leisurely reading for me. Um, it took me some time to digest the information and get through it because it is very science-based, but it really did change my life when I read it. The evidence strongly pointed towards a whole food plant-based diet as being beneficial for human health. And the other book of his that I read is Whole, and this book talks about holism, looking at nutrition holistically, and it also looked at how various entities like government and industry can affect anybody that does research that's outside the current paradigm. Again, not light leisurely reading for me. This took me some time to get through as well. So I think I was fine with reading these initially when I first started out with all of this. If you are not a science nut like me, then it might not be the best avenue to go down at first. I think there's other avenues you can explore um, first. And then eventually, if you can get to these two books, I think that that's great because like I said, they really do open your eyes to a lot of things and they, they certainly changed my life. A lot of Dr. Campbell's information as well as articles and recipes can be found on nutritionstudies.org. And I'm gonna put all of these websites and books in the description box below. Um, but if you go on there, you actually might be able to see me when I took my uh, eCornell plant-based nutrition certificate. They interviewed me about what I thought about the course, and you'll see me when I was uh, considerably overweight in that video. Dr. Campbell's son, Nelson Campbell, and his wife, Kim, made the movie Plant Pure Nation, which is a great movie to watch. And they also have um, a couple of cookbooks that Kim wrote. One is called Plant Pure Nation, and the other is Plant Pure Kitchen. I love these books. Um, to me, they seem like they're based on comfort foods that would be very familiar to people. So if you're transitioning from 
the standard American diet and you're used to the rich flavors of that and you want to try a plant-based diet, I highly recommend both of these books. In fact, when people ask me what cookbooks I recommend to new people doing this, these are two of them that I recommend because it's you don't have to give up your favorite foods and flavors. She just makes them into plant-based versions. There's the use of no oil in any of these recipes. She does use tofu and avocados and other richer plant foods to make sauces and things, but the recipes are really, really good, and I've never had one in here that I haven't liked. I then watched the movie Forks Over Knives, and there's also a website, Forks Over Knives. Forks Over Knives was a documentary, I think it was made in 2011, and it talks about the benefits of a plant-based diet. So I think if you're starting out with any of this, that is a great movie to watch. Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn Jr. is a surgeon, clinician, and researcher from the Cleveland Clinic, and he did long-term nutritional research on arresting and reversing coronary artery disease in severely ill patients. In fact, some of the patients that he was given for this study were so ill that many of them had a life expectancy of a year or less. And those that were adherent to his program, many had no more cardiac events and many lived past 20 years. And what he discovered through his research is that coronary artery disease can be prevented, halted, and in some cases reversed. And he shows this uh, with radiographic evidence of angiograms in his book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. The first half of the book is the science behind everything, and he's got pictures in here of angiograms taken from patients showing improvement in blood flow, as well as PET scans showing improvement in blood flow on uh, patients that followed his nutritional program. The back of the book are all the recipes, and they're absolutely delicious. Although those recipes are great, I still went ahead and picked up his um, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook that was written by his wife, Anne, and his daughter, Jane. And that is where I got the recipe for today's recipe that I did, which was the savory smoky oats, which is fantastic. The diet he recommends is a whole food plant-based diet with no oil, not one drop of oil, not even olive oil that's often marketed as heart healthy, no oil. As you'll read in his book, uh, oils damage that very thin cell layer called the endothelium that lines the blood vessels and he says the endothelial cells are the absolute life jackets to the blood vessels and that oil damages this layer. Dr. Esselstyn's son Rip Esselstyn is a former professional triathlete and firefighter and he has also written a couple books that I recommend and I actually got to see him in person. He came uh, here to lecture and my dad and I attended. I was wearing my Cal t-shirt, Rip was wearing his Cal shirt and he goes hey nice shirt. So the books that he wrote are The Engine 2 Diet and Plant Strong, and I also got his recent cookbook, Engine 2 Cookbook, which I think is also just marvelous. I've made a few things out of that already. But again, when people ask me um, for something to, you know, where I would direct them if they're new to all of this, Rip's books are what I would recommend if you are brand new and you're not so much into the science and uh, things like that. He writes more like in lay terms and it's something that we can pretty much all understand and it's laced with humor, but it still makes really good points. It makes all the important points. So I, I would recommend his books if you're just starting out. Next up is Dr. McDougal. I can't believe I didn't find Dr. McDougal sooner than I did. I had heard about him. I saw him on Forks Over Knives. I just didn't read up on what he was all about until I was about six months into my plant-based journey. But once I found out what he had to say, it was a total game changer for my father and I because it sealed the deal for us. He talks about a starch-based diet, and that is what has worked for us. So Dr. McDougall is a board-certified internal medicine doctor. He's been in practice for about 50 years plus. He's been dealing with nutrition all of this time, and he says that he first discovered the um, cause of most chronic diseases when he was working as a young doctor on the sugar plantations in Hawaii. He was taking care of first generation elders who were fit and trim and active and healthy well into their 90s and they were still eating their native diet of rice and vegetables. The second generation were a little fatter, a little sicker because they had started to adopt the western diet and start to give up their traditional diet. The third generation he said were as fat and sick as any western patient he's taken care of because they completely gave up their traditional diet of starch and vegetables and had fully adopted the Western diet. He said so at that point he realized what caused most chronic diseases and it's the food. 
So he's written a lot of books. Um, one of them that I have is the McDougal program. It's 12 days to dynamic health. I think this is a great place to start if you are interested in a starch based diet. But an even newer book that he wrote, which you might want to pick up is the starch solution. Um, which, like I said, is just a newer version of everything. There are lots of recipes in here. He goes into the how and the why and the physiology. Very, very, uh, everything he has is just really well written, very understandable. And then um, I reference this one a lot, and this is the McDougal program for maximum weight loss. As you can see, I've got it all tabbed. I use it a lot. Um, because of the stage that I'm at now, I've already lost most of my weight, and now I'm looking to just trim up the last 10 pounds or so, and and this is how I'm doing it. His wife Mary is a nurse and she has come up with thousands of recipes. They have a number of cookbooks. There's an app for the phone which I got and it updates regularly so um, I really use that actually a lot. And on his website drmcdougall.com everything is free. He's got a 10-day meal program. He tells you what is a starch and what isn't a starch. Foods to eat, foods to avoid. Um, there's newsletters in there with a lot of research articles that he's written, everything is science-based. There's videos of people that have had success doing his diet. I also found his YouTube videos very, very helpful. So you just go to YouTube and you search for Dr. McDougall and there have been lectures that he has done throughout the years. He has an advanced uh, study program at his own facility in California. He goes elsewhere and lectures. I have gotten so much information out of these. I probably watch his lectures the most out of anybody, um, but I don't know if it's just me being a nurse, but it resonates with me what he talks about. Those have been very, very helpful to me. Dr. Greger, I can't believe I didn't find him sooner than I did either, but I'm glad I found him. Um, he does all the research so you don't have to. I, he must pour over thousands of scientific journals and articles because he puts all of this out on his website at nutritionfacts.org. It's all completely free. It's all peer-reviewed science-based stuff. And then he wrote this gigantic book, How Not to Die. Now, obviously we're gonna die of something someday, but the point is, is how not to die prematurely of chronic American diseases. And so I'm right in the beginning of this and it'll be a while before I finish it, but I can't wait. I also got his How Not to Die cookbook, and I have to say I'm very, very impressed by it. The pictures are really, really pretty in here, which makes you really want to just try the food. Um, but I've made a few things out of here, and everything has been scrumptious. Another person that has been absolutely pivotal in my whole plant-based journey has been Dr. Doug Lyle. He's a clinical psychologist. He works out at True North Health Center and the McDougall program out in California. Um, but I get a lot out of his YouTube videos when he does lectures. And I also picked up his book called The Pleasure Trap. So he delves into the psychology about why we do the things that we do and we make the choices that we do. When we know what the right thing to do is, why don't we do it? Well, this is what he talks about. And so The Pleasure Trap is essentially pleasure seeking, pain avoidance, and energy conservation. That's a big part of why we make the choices that we do. Obviously, there's much, much more to it, but I, for me, it's been a huge part of my plant-based journey because it isn't just about eating carrots and eating potatoes. It's about getting my head in the game and understanding why I do the things that I do. And you have kind of that aha moment when you, when you listen to his stuff. So I highly, highly recommend Dr. Lyle as, a, you know, as an excellent resource for your journey. In fact, one of the YouTube videos that I highly recommend and I will link below is How to Lose Weight Without Losing Your Mind. Chef AJ, if you haven't found Chef AJ yet online, look her up, she's a hoot. She's animated and she's lost a lot of weight after the age of 50. I think she struggled most of her life with food addiction, um, eating disorders, and an unhealthy relationship with food in general and with being overweight. And she finally found what worked for her and ended up losing the weight. One of the videos that I love of hers on YouTube is from Fat Vegan to Skinny Bitch. I'll link that below. But Chef AJ deals mostly with food addiction. And to be perfectly honest, I think most of us do have food addiction. We just don't like to admit it. For example, when you're feeling stressed out, you're not likely to dip into a bag of baby carrots, but you will put your hand in a bag of potato chips. And I can tell you if I eat one chip, I'm gonna eat the whole frickin' bag. 
So she promotes an SOS free diet, which is sugar, oil, salt free. In fact, it's sugar, oil, flour, salt free, because these foods or additives can be very problematic for people that are struggling with food addiction. So that is what she promotes. It's basically the McDougal diet, but sugar, oil, flour, and salt free. And in her book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, on the back cover is her calorie density chart. That is the secret to ultimate weight loss. I talked about that in my video where I talked about losing 70 pounds without having to diet or deprive myself. That is the secret. And Jeff Novick did a fantastic video on calorie density. It's about an hour long on YouTube. I'll put the link below. Another person that's helped me along my journey is Lindsay Nixon. She goes by the name The Happy Herbivore. She has a website and I did subscribe to her meal plan service for a while and that's called Meal Mentor. So if you're the type of person that likes your meals planned out with a shopping list and everything, everything's plant-based and oil-free, um, that's one that I used and I had, I had some good luck with it. Um, she's written lots of cookbooks and I think I have every one of them. And she followed a plant-based diet and lost some weight, but she was struggling with losing the last 25 pounds. So she dove into the research and the science behind everything, and that's when she came up with something called the Supreme Slim Down Blueprint. She also does a lot of cooking demos on YouTube on her YouTube channel, and I just think she's adorable. Lindsay, if you're watching this, hello. Dr. Neil Bernard is a physician and he's the president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine or PCRM. And on there, he promotes a vegetarian or vegan diet for um, promoting human health. He talks about the power plate, which is fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. And he's also a proponent of ethical research. On his website, he has a 21 day vegan kickstart program. And I believe he has also done extensive research on diabetes. So there's a rundown of the plant-based resources that helped my dad and I over the past five years. These are just the people that I keep gravitating towards. You know, what they have to teach just resonates with me. It's worked for me. And I know it's not an all-inclusive list, but I was just hoping to kind of put it all together in one video. So in case you're new to all of this and you have no idea where to start, something might be helpful to you. Or if you're well on your journey, you might just need a reminder or a refresher about something. Maybe you'll find some value in this. Um, but Although each of these people differs in the little nuances in the information that they convey to people, like Dr. Esselstyn, he focuses more on patients with cardiovascular disease, and Chef AJ focuses on folks with food addiction, and Dr. McDougall says it's a starch-based diet, and Forks Over Knives says it's a whole food plant-based diet. To me, the core is still the same. It's a whole food plant-based diet. We um, we found great value in Dr. McDougall um, saying that it's a starch-based diet, so that's worked for us. Um, it's low in fat, and I've taken bits and pieces from each one of these people and incorporated it into my life, and my dad has done the same. So hopefully you will find what works for you, and I hope you found value in this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate that when you do, and I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.